Well, good morning, fellas. Mr. Halter here in the uh, little Airbnb on the Halter property. Got Lenny here. We woke up this morning to spend some time together in the Word. Uh, actually, I'm really glad that Caleb decided to just take some time and talk about how to study it, how to get into it on your own. And uh, this has been a, a major point of my own focus with churches for the last 30 years. Um, I don't know if any of you remember or had ever read, there was a book that came out called The Re Reveal Study, and it was a revealing of 30 years of incredible ministry by one of America's largest churches. Um, I won't waste your time giving you names and spaces, but um, since then, the, the leader of that church had fallen to some sexual sin after many, many years it came out. But this church might have been the most prolific church in America during the uh, 90s, uh, 80s, 90s, into the 2000s, about focusing or helping other churches around the country understand how to do good church. And so they, uh, probably 25 years in, they decided to hire a marketing firm to discern whether or not all of their incredible teaching that they did on Sunday, all of their small groups, um, they essentially had some of the most prolific small group ministry in the world. And they, you know, you could start as a fetus and work your way all the way up through divorce care. And you could be in an age related or need related Bible study your whole life. Um, they had some of the best Bible teachers, some of the best apologetics teachers. I mean, they, they just, they stacked their team full of these amazing Bible teachers. And then they do the study. They call on a marketing firm to go, Hey, has is there a correlation between all this incredible teaching that we're giving people and their ability to become like Jesus? And their, their goal, they said, was to be or to create or develop fully devoted followers of Jesus. So they just wanted to find out, has all this work that we've done paid off? And uh, so they, they paid millions of dollars for this marketing firm. They came in and talked to thousands of people that had been to all their church services, all their, all their small group Bible studies downloaded all of their teaching videos and they said, are you guys more like Jesus than your standard uh, mechanic down on the corner that doesn't do anything related to God or the church? And uh, they found out the reveal was that there was uh, no correlation between all that they had been giving people and them becoming more like Jesus. So a bit of a bust, if you know what I mean. Um, but I remember being impressed with the leadership that they decided to tell America, hey, um, we missed something. And the leader of that movement at the time said, well, from what we can discern, the thing that we missed the most was that we didn't understand how powerful it was to help people to feed themselves. We literally fed them so much stuff. We just kept creating this big trough of teaching for them that they never took ownership of it and learn how to feed themselves. And so guys, uh, what Caleb's doing is what we need right now. It's, it's not, um, just that we feed you, but you know, we all got together and even some of you mentioned it to us and said, Hey, teach us to feed ourselves. And this is so important guys. So think about a progression of your spiritual journey. There is a time in your life when you're going to need to be fed. There just is. That's why, uh, we still do Sunday morning teachings and other things. There are just some people that need that. But if you move to the second phase, that's where you become a self-feeder. Like where if something shut down again and uh, Tyler got laryngitis for nine years and couldn't talk, that you would be fine because you'd still be able to get in God's word and hear from God yourself. So that's, that's the key. Most Christians never get to phase two. They never become self-feeders. And then the third phase is obviously that you feed other people. And uh, that's what you know, some of the old table leaders have been doing for you. They've been opening up their house. You can tell uh, it's not rocket science. They just open up the word. That's what it means to feed somebody else. Doesn't mean you have to be uh, you know, understanding all of the history of the Bible and all that. You just open it up and uh, you can actually Google things now. You can go, hey, what did it mean by that? And you'll get a pretty reasonable response. So it's, it's not only doable that you can learn how to be a self-feeder, but it's very reasonable that in short time, many of you will be feeding your friends. Uh, the CPC Men's Fraternity, I think, should double every couple of years just simply because some of you go, look, um, I've, been, I've been going to Joe's feeding trough for a while, and I want to feed some of my own friends, and you take that leadership for that. So 
I do want you to consider that, but for sure, at least I want every one of us to move to that second level where we say, I'm going to feed myself um, because it's so critical. Um, What I'm going to talk about this morning really briefly is just this idea of hearing from God through the whisper. All right. So Caleb talked about hearing God through his word. Um, But you have to remember, there were many times in human history where they didn't even have the Bible. Uh, So Old Testament, they had the Old Testament scrolls and writings. Uh, They had essentially the entire Old Testament. It was canonized, if you will. You could find it in different scrolls. Uh, In the 1940s, they found huge pots full of uh, the Old Testament. It actually gave us an idea that, you know, what we have today is exactly what they had way back in the day. So they had scribes and they were by the thousands. They were, they were, they were replicating the Old Testament, uh, the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Old Testament. Um, every Hebrew would have known that stuff. They grew up on it. And then there was a season where uh, God just stopped speaking 300 years uh, between the last book of the Old Testament that was written and then all of a sudden, John shows up, uh, John the Baptist, and it says he's like a voice crying out in the wilderness. Like for the first time, God is in 300 years, God's going to speak again. And so you can imagine how people would have just been uh, so thankful that God's voice was going to be uh, hearable to them again. Now, they thought that it would come through some great prophet who would then again teach everybody on a Sunday, if you will. But Um, really it was foreshadowing Jesus coming into the world. And the unique thing that Jesus did in regards to hearing from God is that he turned it from uh, some guy at the top like Moses or or something like that, telling everybody what they should believe. All of a sudden Jesus was saying like, I will inhabit you. Part of the the privilege of being a Jesus follower is that I will speak to you personally. Um, And so there's so many scripture that we've already shared about Jesus being the good shepherd, that he can shepherd you. But really the, 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 the main part of the Jesus story that you should be excited about is when he said that he's going to promise you the Holy Spirit. Um, so it's not like an if, it's not like only for those that, you know, really press into God. It's, it's like a, a promise to anybody that would follow Jesus, that he would speak to you individually, personally. And so uh, when we think about, well, how does he speak to us? Does he scream at us? Does he pester us. Um, Sometimes uh, I'll tell people, think about how you envision Jesus. You probably picture a certain look. Maybe you uh, may have been watching The Chosen, so that's what Jesus looks like to you. That's what he sounds like to you. But think about the personality of the Holy Spirit, that he's not like a frantic uh, ant that always screams and is stressed out and is constantly in your grill uh, Holy Spirit's not like a nagging wife that every day just wakes up and says, Hey, you suck. Try to get better. Um, the Holy Spirit has his own personality. And, and what I've found is that the Holy Spirit's voice is a little bit more like a whisper. And I want to read to you out of Proverbs this morning. I don't know my glasses, so this could be a little rough. But uh, it says, Proverbs of Solomon, son, son of David, king of Israel. By the way, Solomon was, was said to have been the most wise fellow in the world. So... Uh, For attaining wisdom and discipline, for understanding words of insight, for inquiring a discipline and prudent life, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning. Let the discerning get guidance for understanding proverbs and parables, the sayings of riddles and the wise. And then it says, for the fear of the Lord is beginning of wisdom. So at the very beginning of the great wisdom literature. It talks about discerning and understanding and essentially pressing into the the wisdom of God for you. And then I want to uh, whip down to verse 20, because I think it speaks a little bit more about how the Spirit speaks to us. It says, wisdom calls aloud in the street. She raises her voice in the public squares. At the head of the noisy street, she cries out, and in the gateways of the city, she makes her speech. Um, So this is an Old Testament sort of picture. Um, If you grew up in any um, Middle Eastern or Hebrew context, there would have been the city market and there would have been the city gates. And what everybody knew is that all the old guys would hang out at the city gates and they were essentially the wisdom for the community. And so I don't know if it was a Saturday morning, Sunday morning, or sometime during the week, but you could always go down and you could kind of hear the wisdom of the elders, if you will. 
And so it's really talking about the, the whisper of God right now. The wisdom, think about it, the whisper of God calls aloud in the streets. And she raises her voice in the public square as well. So you have all these other voices. But the wisdom of God or the whisper of God, his word to us also, it gives its voice in the same place. And so I remember, um, I wanted to share this story with you. Back when I was in, uh, I think it was a freshman in high school, I was playing quarterback. Um, I didn't play quarterback after this year, if that tells you how that went. But I remember um, part of the training of being a young quarterback, I remember he uh, gathered around about 15, 20 of our players, and he asked them to all scream obscenities at me um, until he said stop. And so they did. So they got me in the middle of a circle, and all these friends started screaming at obscenities. Okay, So you can imagine the scene. But before that, he said, here's what I'm going to do, Hugh. I'm going to actually call out plays to you. And he says, my voice is going to be exactly like this. And he says, you're going to have a hard time hearing it because of how loud the other voices are going to be. So, But he said, I'm going to be right on your ear. Like if you focus, you'll be able to hear the play. And then I want you to be able to call out the play. And so this happened. And he probably did it five, six times where the guys would start screaming. And then he would just say, hey, wide right, 42, blah, 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 um, Peyton Manning style. And then at the end, he'd tell everybody to shut up and he'd say, call the play halter. And so what, what he was teaching me, obviously, is that I had to become attuned to his voice. I had to actually focus. He wasn't going to scream louder than the guys were screaming. And he wasn't going to tell these guys to shut up so that he could just whisper Oftentimes, uh, the whisper of God is like a normal cadence. It's a normal sound, but the voices that we hear in the world, the voices that you wake up with in your head, that are telling you all this other stuff, they're just screaming at you. And so um, part of listening to the whisper of God is just is literally training your mind to be quiet and to focus and to hear what he says. And that's why you spending time with God in the morning, throughout the day, late at night, uh, somewhere where you can get away from all the voices is so critical uh, because I find that God does not like force his um, volume. He doesn't like bring his volume up. He just is steady all the time. And so you're the one that has to adjust to it. You've got to quiet the other voices and get away if that makes sense. So, and here's, I just want to give you like four thoughts. I really tried to think through like in my life, the whisper of God really has been, I guess, the bread and butter for me. Um, and some things that, these are maybe some Hugh Halter things. I don't know if they'll be helpful to you. But some ways that I have been able to discern a little bit maybe um, what the voice of God is for me. Um, number one, it's a little bit weird, but it's after a workout. Um, some of the most prolific moments where I've got an idea or a vision or I hear from God, hey, go do this for Cheryl. Uh, think about calling this guy today. Don't buy that rental house. Uh, it's it's too rushed right now. It's you're you're too stressed out about. It, so just don't worry about it. Um, those types of things I hear from God. Oftentimes they come right after a workout, and I don't know what it is. If it's a clearing out of the stress that happens in a workout, but some of you guys might consider that maybe um, or during a workout. I find that a lot of guys say that they hear from God when they're at the end of a run. Um, some guys say they hear from God on a run. I can't. I, I only hear from demons when I'm running, okay? I don't think about anything positive. But for some of you, um, you recognize when you get out and you're doing something active, physical, it sort of, it does. It quiets things down. It releases uh, a lot of the stress. And so you might actually consider um, not just doing a quiet time where you break away in your office, but you actually add it to a, a physical moment. Uh, maybe that will be helpful to you. Secondly, um, I want you to think about inklings or um, when you get little daydreams or moments of inspiration. I want you to start to realize that, that is, those are the whispers of God. Um, especially when it has to do with your inner life, protecting purity, keeping your thoughts clear, and specifically when it comes to mission. When God uh, says, hey, I do want you to, to call Joe today. I think he's having a rough go. I want you to spend a half hour with him and just see how he's doing. Um, you'll find that oftentimes you go, that for sure was the Lord. So pay attention to 
just those momentary little daydreams or inklings that you get um, to help people, the more you start acting on those, the more you'll start to realize that like the Holy Spirit's actually talking to you all day long. It's just that most of the time we just like deflect it. Um, so that's the second thought I had. Also, I do want you to think about um, the whisper of God is, is again, not going to be a frantic voice or a screaming voice. So whenever you are in the pressure cooker, you're going to have a hard time hearing the whisper of God. So there has to be some cadence or rhythm in your life where you take a little breather. Um, like for me, you know, I used to always try to take an hour a day, a day a week, um, a weekend, a quarter, and a week, a year. That was like a, a rhythm for me to go. And like the week, a year, I, I would, Cheryl would like, give me a week and I'd go take off. I might do a quiet retreat. Um, you know, the weekends were, uh, sometimes I'd be with guys. I'd actually take some men that were, uh, they were godly men and, and we would just talk about each other's lives and we would speak into each other's lives. Um, the daily rhythm of just an hour, just something where, um, I pull off after a workout. Um, sometimes I, I would just pull my car over and I just take time. Just those things are going to help you remove the pressure to be able to hear from God. All right. And then lastly, um, and I've talked with you guys about this, is just the the Sunday planning, the weekly time where I, I generally I'll pour a beverage. Uh, it used to be another beverage. I'm, I'm moving into the tea zone right now. So Sunday night, I'll pour some tea. I'll light a candle um, or I'll go out and I'll make a fire uh, over by the barn and I take my day timer, I take my Bible um, and then I, I basically have a to-do list. I just think through the entire week and I ask the Lord, I'm like, speak. And I feel like it's like a, a running conversation every week where I just hear from God like, yeah, here's what I'd like you to consider doing on Monday. Um, here's some things we got to talk through with the team on Tuesday morning and and I just, it's like a constant little cadence. Hey, run the play, run the play, consider this. And uh, so guys, I don't know if any of those help, but the whisper of God is, is there every day for you, every single day. It's a promise of the Holy Spirit. And so uh, begin to uh, discipline or work this into your life as much as you would work any discipline into your life. Make this more of a priority than, than literally everything. There, there is nothing more important for you than being able to hear God. And uh, so hopefully those things help a little bit today. Love you guys. We'll see you soon.